Hello. Uh, my name is Guy Cavalcanti. I am CEO of Megabots. We make giant fighting robots in a sports league of the future. I'm not even kidding. Um, this is what we do. Uh, what the robot you see here is a six-ton, 15-foot-tall robot called the Mark II. Uh, it fires giant paint cannonballs out of one arm and then 80 t-shirts in three seconds out of the other arm. Um, this is the robot firing t-shirts at a sales conference uh, at a group of marketers. Um, <laughs> I have to not laugh when I give my own pitch. Uh, this is us taking a wrecking ball of the robot and knocking it over showing off what these robots look like when they fight. This is me joyriding the lower half of our new robot, a 430 horsepower tank. This is us beating up our Japanese opponent in a mock-up form. Um, this is us destroying an oven with a giant 500-pound chef's knife and a piano. Uh, this is the Mark III upper body lifting a 2,500-pound car in a two-arm lift and then dropping it because the car shouldn't be lifted by its hood uh, or, its, or its roof. Um, so that's us. Uh, we are trying to create the live act. Thank you. <laughs> Got to not crack up. All right. So uh, we are creating the 21st century live action sport, right? Um, you want to see giant robots. How many of you want to see giant fighting robots in an arena near you? <laughs> That's right. Um, so we are building robots that compete live. Uh, we started off by showing the world instead of telling the world by challenging a Japanese company to a giant robot fight, which probably wasn't the best idea in the world, but it got a lot of attention. 5,000 unique articles in all major languages, 30 billion impressions in the press, 22 billion about this, 30 billion about us. Um, what that led to is we poached the entire Mythbusters video production team to be our production team in our seed round. Um, we got 20 and a half million video views on our self-produced season of content. We have an advertising value equivalency of $271 million, which is a third of the brand value of the entire Transformers franchise over the period of the dual announcement. That led to real revenue, three quarters of a million dollars from event appearances, us showing up at shows and shooting t-shirts at people, $500,000 in sponsorship for the next robot, $550,000 in merchandise sales of t-shirts and stickers. Um, our product, when you think about it, it's not robots, it's going to live events, right? It's putting brands on the robots, it's the TV and digital rights around creating a sport, and it's merchandise, it's apparel, toys, and comics. Uh, case study of Maker Fair, Autodesk brought us there. We were the anchor attraction at a 120,000 person event with the Autodesk brand on it. Autodesk got 7.4 million video views, four unique videos made for them, 100 unique articles, not about us, but about Autodesk bringing us to Maker Fair and how cool is that? We had co-branded swag. It started a three-year partnership. We're now a full Autodesk house. We use their CAD software for everything. Uh, what we're doing is we're creating a sports league. So we are making live robots that fight in stadiums and arenas around the world. You guys have been around for a while now. What year is this for the company? Uh, third year. Third Going year. into our third year. But yep. the venture capitalists haven't lined up to back it yet. Uh, they kind of have. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes. So we have what? a seed fund of uh, $3.85 million as of uh, early last year. Oh, wow. Who's the lead investor? Uh, Autodesk and DCM. Great. Awesome. I stand corrected. Uh, feedback from our judges. Okay, this is the kind of company you invest in just to like get to go to the events. This looks so fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> when you started out, I thought this was the most ridiculous thing I'd ever seen. But when you, when you started going, I said, oh, now I get it. It's not about selling robots. It's about creating a competition like WWE, that wrestling crap. People exactly. Watch that. Yeah. That's a big business. It's Formula One meets like WWE or UFC. In right, so you could create, yeah, WWF and all this. You could create a huge market here. Yes. It's pretty amazing. That's cool. How, how do you get the team to be motivated and focused at work and not watch all the content that you guys produce? You know, everybody comes in like 10 o'clock. They roll in. They just don't want to be there. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's tough, you know. You got to, like, crack the whip a bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Seriously, I, I assume you're a, a robot nerd, but the real business here is in the entertainment part of it, building like a WWE network. That's Our interim SVP is the co-founder, COO, and former president of UFC, and we just brought him on board. Really? 
Yes. Awesome. Going right when, direction. when will we see it on television? Do you have a TV deal yet? I How? cannot tell you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you can see it on YouTube on and Facebook now. Half of our first season is on YouTube and Facebook now. Got it. What about, you said they were like shooting t-shirts at a marketing event. So like you said, it, what is it, the appearances as part of your business? Do you like put them on a trailer and drive across the country or like how does that work? Uh, the Mark II is on a container ship going to China for a $216,000 appearance in Beijing. Oh. So yeah, oh. that's part of it. But then we start running our own events of like, come see the robots, Sunday, 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 edge your seat, etc. That's Q3 of 2018 is our plan. Yeah. How many of these guys do you have? Uh, we have like 1.9. <laughs> 1. So one's done, and then one's being assembled back in the shop, like literally right now. What happened in the Japanese fight? You, you got August of 2017, we fight robots live for the first time. Oh, okay. Wow. Yes. So what you have to do here is you have to create a fleet of these robots, good guy robots and bad guy robots, so that they can fight each other, create personalities. This is really like WWE, only it's robots. Someone asked me what I would do with $100 million if someone invested in that. I said uh, I would make robots that like rampage down Market Street and like flee into the bay and nobody knows what happens. But like everybody with a <laughs> cell phone has like thousands of videos of like a robot going by. And they were like, now see us fight it in the uh, Oakland Coliseum on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> um, yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> okay. Let's hear it again. Well done, Megabots. Um, and uh, apologies to whoever has to follow that. Uh, <laughs> just one. Um, we're, we're big on the disruption thing uh, here in San Francisco. Don't get yourself arrested, okay, kid? Um, just the Market Street thing got me a little. He, the only reason I'm a little worried is I think he's actually going to do it. Um, <laughs> up, I'm going to ask my judges to give me their number three, their number two, and their number one startup from the section. Um, you saw a Photokite, Topology, Traveling Spoon, Thimble, Megabots, and Bounce Imaging. So, who can give me their number three and their number two? Bounce Imaging is three, and Megabots is two. Great. And then Megabots, two. Okay, um, another vote for Megabots. Strangely, but... somehow, I don't know why. I'm just going to tap out, but... It feels like it's going to work. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It feels like it could work. And he's um, freakishly into it. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> it's, it's contagious. Yeah. I feel like... We live in the future, and that science fiction is now not fiction anymore. Like, we're going to go to the Staples Center or Oracle Arena to watch robots fight. Yeah, Dana okay. White, Dana White, the UFC, fine. and, you know. It seems normal. It's like yeah. our childhoods have become reality. Nico, what's your number one? Number one is Megabots, because uh, I think VR is becoming huge now, because everybody's trying to escape from reality, given where we are today. Yep. And that guy, oh my God, you know, he is <laughs> as authentic and as insanely paranoid about his craft as it possibly gets. The enthusiasm is, in fact, set up. hard, you know, not to see that set from up. everywhere. No, I do it think up. that it can be a, a live entertainment brand. I, I do agree. believe that. You know? Okay, well, who's your number one? Uh, you Megabots up? is number one. Set it up uh, to I demo. I believe this. He's going to be like Dana White of UFC or that Vince McMahon of WWE. At first, I thought this was a mechanical robot thing that people would buy. But no, 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 that's not it. It's all about entertainment. Okay, so you picked Megabots. Megabots. Okay, Megabots running away with it. Okay. Megabots. I usually pick the thing that's my favorite, but I think this is just the one that's just destined to win. I can see myself going, even though I'm not their target audience in the slightest. I know that you're... Don, you've been with me all these years from the beginning. That's right. Ten Here we years. go. Ten years. Tell us, who won the 2017 Launch Festival? So as judges, when we look at all of these companies, and we've seen every single one of them, we look for the company that can be most successful, uh, have the biggest market, uh, have the most revenue. And when this company first started presenting, I thought uh, they might sell two or three I thought it was, you know, not a big market, but uh, I was confused because it wasn't until they got later into the presentation that I figured out, holy shit, this could be a gigantic market. And it had nothing to do with selling the product. It had to do with creating uh, an, an audience around it. So you probably know who I'm talking about now. Uh, the winner of the best of show is Megabot. Congratulations. Oh! Sunday, Sunday, Sunday.
Congratulations one more time. Well done. You better build a billion dollar UFC out of this. Okay, or four billion. Here we go.